Hey guys, welcome to the third video for Exiled Server Setup. In the first two videos, we went over setting up the server in Windows and in Linux. Today, we're going to be looking at installing plugins. Um, this will just be one tutorial on Windows because it's practically the same on Linux and Windows. First of all, you're going to want to find your plugins folder. On Windows, this was an app data. Um, now on Linux, it's in the .config folder where you move the folder to. So you may have a bunch of folders in here. It might look a bit messy, but if you just press P, it should take you to the P section where you're going to find plugins. Now I already have a bunch of plugins in here, but um, for the sake of the video, uh, we will just start over. Okay, so now I've removed everything except for a few um, dependencies. So to start off with, you're probably not going to want to delete everything because, um, well, Exile has a few plugins. So I should start by fixing this. So if I just quickly jump over to the Exile and download the latest version so I can get the plugins back again. And if you accidentally delete them too, you can easily just re-download them, extract the folder, and because this is made for a Linux system, then you have to extract it twice in Windows. And there we go. Now I have the plugins and we can move it all back in. Now I have a few files that won't let me replace because I'm currently using them. Now we should be good to go. So the first plugin we're going to look at for today is the admin tools, which is a pretty useful plugin for any Excel server. So if we just go into releases, you can see the latest version and you just download the .dll file. The .dll file in any plugin is the file you're gonna wanna use to in your plugins folder. So all you gotta do to install the plugin is just drag and drop. Now this plugin is installed on our server, but we currently don't have any settings set up. So the way you set settings up is you find your exile folder, which is in the same folder as your plugins folder. And in here, it's generated a config for every version or for every um, port you have running on your machine. But um, any new config file is going to show up uh, completely empty. So if I just make a new one, like this. So now this config file is going to run when we use this port. And um, so by default, when you, when you um, open a new config, it's going to be completely empty. But this, um, this is because we need to fill out everything on our own. Um, all, all config options have a default setting, uh, which is used if you don't have any settings. So now if we look at the admin tools page, as you can see, um, someone didn't like to add a readme file, so it might be difficult to find the config. Sometimes you can get lucky and um, find it in the Discord channel along with some permissions. And if you don't get lucky, you see you can, this is commands. You have a couple of config options and then some permissions. But in a case where someone doesn't document it properly, you can always just, um, at least when they have released source code, go into the source code and usually they have all their config options in the plugin file. So if we look here, there's a reload configs line. You can see this is the config and this is the line you want to use in your document. So if admin got tutorials, so basically this is an option if tutorials should have got mode. So we can just take and copy this, put it in, and this takes a Boolean value. This means it's either true or false. So we can set it to false. This means we don't want tutorials to have got mod. Let me just make a new line. 
then if L49 should be able to speak. And this value is the default. So you can see it's true by default. So we would like him to speak. speak. So we'll just leave it at that. And then if you go to the exile Discord, you'll find um, a bunch of plugins here. And common utils, that's someone uh, people usually like as well. So see, he has a DLL file right here. We just press download, we save it, and then we find the folder it's in, and we simply put it into our plugins folder. There we go. And now to change the settings, we go back into our script here, or our config file, and then let's see, here we have some default settings. Okay, um, we actually, uh, well, these are only the settings for healing, actually, I see. Um, so, yeah, and then if you just scroll through them, sometimes it's hidden at the top. Here we see a few inventory settings. And then for each setting you want to use, you just paste it in. Sometimes you just want to paste it all. But I think you got to look out for here. This is not allowed. It's gonna th it's gonna be an error, and it's not gonna read this line at all. So you want to remove this. Alternatively, you can um, copy it to the line above. It does not allow comments on the same line as a config option. And then you just mess around with any settings you want. And then, lastly, to finish off um, setting up our server, you probably want. Uh, you want some permissions set up for using commands and stuff. So the way you do that is if you go back into your plugins folder. Um, now I deleted this too, apparently. It looks like I didn't get it back. So we just go into our downloads, exile. Now why didn't we get permissions? Um, maybe it needs to run the server once to set up. So let's do that. Now the fastest way to launch the server is if you know where it is. You can locate it. For me it's in my Steam library. Come on. Secret lab. Then we go right here. We have local admin. And then it wants an IP address. And we used 7784 in this case. You can use any value you want. Almost as long as nothing else on the system is using it. So now the server is starting up and we should soon, after it's started, see this folder. Now it's loading Exile. Now it's creating the permissions directory. And here we got it. We also got the admin tool stuff. And this is just, um, any plugin can create a folder in here and the admin tools uses it to keep track of overwatch mode and hidden tags. So if we go in permissions now, you can see there's default permission set up for us. The default option, that's to say anyone who doesn't have a permission group gets this group. And then we have some permissions. And the same here we have, um, if you have the group admin, you get these permissions and you can just copy paste it like this, say maybe we have an owner group. And if you want to give, give a group all permissions, you can type it like this. Now owner has all permissions. So the way you usually find permissions is um, if plugins have them listed. And if plugins don't have permissions listed, um, then most plugins have a GitHub page. You can see, do we have anything listed in here? We have some default values. And otherwise, we can see if there's any permissions in the source code. Now, finding permissions might be a bit more difficult because they aren't in the plugin folder or plugin file. But um, usually, they have them in the events handler during any events. If there's any event that require permission, so um, we can just search for permission. And as we see, admin tools doesn't use any permissions.
Oh, command utils, sorry. But then if we go into admin tools, extensions, um, oh, sorry, not extensions. Then we see permissions. And now all of these are listed nicely in the Discord too, but this is just one way to find them. So you can see at.kick, that's the permission needed for kicking people. Then you just simply say, okay, admins should be allowed to kick people. There you go, now admins have the kick permission. So if we go into the Discord, look in admin tools, and surely we have some permissions listed here. So um, let's say we want to allow admins to also um, mute people or mute all. Now, how do we add a second permission? We just add a new line and do it like this. Now we have a second permission. And you just keep doing this for each permission you need and you just keep adding groups like this. Then we save the file and these permission names they simply uh, correspond to the names of um, the group you have defined in remote admin. So if we go into our SCP file, config, and then we go into our remote admin config. Let me just set this um, so you can easier see, see it. So see right here we have the owner. So this means anyone with this owner rank is gonna get this permission. Anyone with this admin rank is going to get this permission. And if we wanted moderators to have a permission too, we'd create a new one called moderator, just like it's listed here. And that's pretty much all the basics for how you set up plugins with permissions and config options. I hope you enjoyed my video. Have a good day.